So, are you curious about playing the Elder Scrolls Arena? Are you actually stuck in the first dungeon because you haven't built your character up properly? Well, look no further because I'm about to walk you through all of the step process into building your character up properly from my game experience. Hello everybody, I'm Harper94 and I'm about to show you how to play the Elder Scrolls Arena at least from uh, my experience when playing the, from playing the game. So this will be a step, uh, just kind of a process of going about things so that you're actually able to survive the first dungeon and go throughout the whole entire game with your character without actually taking too many deaths along the way. Now before I get into it, uh, the GOG version of this game does come packed with some goodies and including a full-fledged walkthrough called the Codex. It is essentially a full-fledged walkthrough of the entire game. It has maps, it has detailed stats about enemies, about uh, certain races of characters and so forth. It's definitely a very handy thing to have on hand, but say you don't have that on hand on you at the moment and you're confused as to what to do. That's where I'm going to actually walk you through. So with that being said, we're gonna start I'm gonna start a new game and I'm going to show you guys what it is that I'm talking about. I'm gonna skip that because so the main story is Uriel Septim is betrayed by Yeager Thorn who and is sent off to another dimension and it's up to you the player to actually go out and set him free. Now this is where you generate your class. I normally just select it outright and I normally go with the warrior. Next we're going to name your character. This basic uh Basic RPG stuff. Gender, of course. I always choose male. Now here's the thing. This is the entire providence of Tamrio. Oh, excuse me. This is the entire providence of Tamrio. Now this affects your race of the character. So you have High Rock, you have Hammerfell, Somerset, Valenwood, Elsewhere, Imperial Providence, Black Marsh, Morrowind, and Skyrim to choose from. Now since I like being a Nord, I'm going to choose Skyrim. Go with yes. And it goes into how the Nords are strong wild warriors and they are resistant to the cold. Now here is the bread and butter of your character. You distribute points to your stats, making your character uh, a lot better. So strength, this will affect damage, max kilos, and your and the agility here is going to affect your chance to hit and your chance to defend. It's given me 12 points to distribute, so if I distribute it all to agility, these numbers tend to go up. Now say like, I'm not happy with the stats. Okay, I go to done, and I have a chance to reroll them. And I can do this as many times as I want to. Let's see here, it gave, it's given me more points to distribute. And my agility is now at 41. Chance to hit, chance to defend is now negative one, but if I distribute all 17 of it to agility, it's now at 58. My chance to hit and defend is now plus one. That gives me more of a chance to fight against like smaller enemies in the starter dungeon. A damage I'm happy about. I'm not really too concerned about magic as of yet. So happy with the stats. Go to save stats. And lastly, it's gonna. Uh, tell you to choose your face. This doesn't really affect anything in the game except to have your character's portrait on the corner here. So I'm going to be choosing this face right here and we're going to choose done. Okay. I'm going to skip that for now. Well, I'm going to skip that. Um, She's basically going on about how it's up to you 
to save the Emperor and restore peace to Tamriel. That's the first time she interacts with you. It's gonna wanna go and get this ruby key. Open the door with it. I'm gonna to wanna to turn left. You get the loot stuff. You get the loot stuff. Okay, so now you're gonna to wanna to go to your portrait. Go to the inventory. Now, nine times out of ten, you're not gonna find a weapon in that loot. So it gives you a broadsword to start out with if you're a warrior. Different classes have different kind of weapons to start out with. I'm actually going to start off with the uh, battle axe. Now I'm gonna use the broadsword. Now here, the text down here is actually instructing you on where to go, so you're going to want to go west, then south to find the shift gate. So west, and then south. You're going to want to push the A key to actually bring out your weapon. I'm going to want to avoid that because being in the water will make you vulnerable. You can't pull out your weapon or nothing. So I'm going to want to go to go over here. Okay. Now. Go over here, kill this goblin. Gain a new level. All right, so now we have three more points to choose from to distribute on our stats. I'm actually going to use these three points to agility. All right, now our chance to hit and defend ourselves is plus two. So it's good. It's good. Now it's your choice to spend however long you want in the starter dungeon. It does not give you a set time limit. But if you really want to be done with this dungeon really quick, you gotta at least pay attention to which direction you gotta go. So it said west, then south. I'm gonna go west like I've been doing. Kill that rat. Alright, now we have ourselves a shield. Once again, go into the inventory page and equip it. I'll equip one of these marks too, why not? All right. West and then south. There we go. And with that, you have found the shift gate. Now I'm going to give you a clue as to what to look for. So when you push the M key, you're going to want to look for this green dot right here. That's the shift gate, and that's something to look for whenever you're playing the first dungeon. Now the Steam version and the uh, other version from Bethesda.net, it's going based off of the floppy disk version which means this has an anti-piracy measure so because of that you have to type in whatever number magicka is used to cast a certain spell that it gives you 
type the number right, you get to go through. If you uh, type it in wrong three times, it'll crash the game. So with that, because GOG goes based off of the CD version, we can just walk right on through. And with that, we are out. So yeah, put the weapon away. Now your best bet into completing the main quest is before you start the main quest, you're gonna want to level your character up. That's the main thing you're gonna want to do before chasing after the Staff of Chaos. I'd recommend until level between somewhere level 5 to level 6. That's when you're going to want to start to look for the Staff of Chaos. But until then, you can actually uh, find dungeons, explore the wilderness, uh, wait till nighttime so that the monsters come out, or just spend your time in the dungeon and level up that way too. Anyway works as long as you're leveling up. But in any case, that was the first dungeon. Uh, hope this video actually helps you guys in terms of actually playing the Elder Scrolls Arena. And I'll just see you guys around in the next video. So thank you all so much for watching. If you guys like what you see and you want to see more, subscribe today. Leave a like down below. Any opinions you would like to share, comment down below as well. And I will see you guys around in the next video. This is M Harper 94 like always, signing off.